There are important areas to effective treatment planning. A therapist can ask questions like, how do I decide what to say or do next? A therapist must accomplish therapeutic goals, plan treatment through session, formulate treatment plans, plan individual sessions, decide whether to focus on a problem, and modify customary treatment for specific disorder the client has. The objectives of the therapist are not only to facilitate the remission of the patient's disorder, but to prevent relapse. So a goal is to teach the patient how to become their own therapist. So in order to achieve these objectives, um, you have to build sound therapeutic alliance with patient, which is a relationship. You build, you make structure and process of therapy clear. You teach patients the cognitive model and share conceptualization. You help ease their distress through techniques and problem solving. And you teach the patient how to use the techniques, techniques themselves that will help them um, generalize and then that encourage, encourages them to use them later on in the future. Therapy can be viewed in three phases. The first phase is the beginning phase. In this phase, the therapist um, is to build a strong therapeutic alliance with the client uh, that helps, they can help the, the client find their goals and solve problems and they teach the cognitive model to the client. And that's where the therapist can activate the patient's behavioral characteristics, like if they're depressed. And then that's they can educate the patients about their disorders and help them find strategies to cope. In the second phase of therapy, which is the middle phase, a therapist should continue to identify, evaluate, and modify the patient's beliefs. And then the therapist should share their conceptualization using the intellectual and emotional techniques, which are very effective to teach the patient the skills needed to accomplish their goals. In the third phase, the final phase, the therapist is to prepare the termination between the client the patient and the therapist and prevent the relapse that the, that the patient might have in the future and also assign patient the homework that can help. So this is where the therapist begins to create a treatment plan. First, they develop a treatment plan based on the evaluation of the patient, their access one and access to their symptoms and disorders, their problems and goals. And the therapist should stick to the general treatment plan, revising it as they go throughout the therapy sessions, and if it is necessary. And they also analyze the specific problems that the that the client may, that the patient may have, and this helps conceptualize the patient's difficulties and to construct plan specifically for the patient. Here's an example of problem analysis, and here is a typical problem situation which is an example. Um, ben is working on his final art project for class and on the day before the final, before it's due. And so he sits in the room and he thinks to himself, I'll never get this done and I'm going to flunk the class. I'm such a bad artist. He then starts feeling sad and mad and just stops drawing altogether. Then with desperation begins to cry. So here we see the situation is him sitting in his room, his automatic thoughts are I'll never get this done. I'm going to flunk and I'm such a bad artist. His emotion is sad and mad. His behavior is that he stops drawing altogether. And his physiological reaction is that he starts to cry. Here is where we analyze the problem with Ben. Ben's dysfunctional behaviors, he gives, up, he gives up on his drawing. He fails to respond to his automatic thoughts and does not ask for help from his professor, other students, or friends. His cognitive distortions is that he attributes his problems to weakness in, in his self rather than to the depression he's feeling. He thinks his future is hopeless, and so he thinks he can't do anything about the problem. The four therapeutic strategy, strategies are one, do problem solving, the two, monitor moods and behavior, three, use Socratic questioning, and four, use guided discovery to find meaning to thoughts. A therapist should analyze um, the therapy session and so in the beginning of the therapy, the therapist should check the patient's moods 
if the patient is um is is feeling depressed or how his feelings compare with the last session and the moods that are predominant um like i said like depression anger hopelessness sadness and the patient should provide a brief review of the week so he can he can he or she can compare the sessions from the previous week and find some signs of progress positive experiences that happen before the last therapy session or the therapy session that is currently happening or the problems like i said from the last week i'm going to check the patient's use of alcohol drugs and medication if it applies and in this the problems um, if there are any problems in these areas, you have to discuss them fully with the patient. The patient and the therapist should prioritize agenda items. Um, in, this, in this section, the therapist can ask themselves questions like, how long will each um, agenda item take? Or what are the problems that the patients can solve themselves without using any of the help of the therapist? And in this section, um, the next section is where you can review the homework that was assigned to the patient. Um, was it, was it, did it have a relationship to the agenda items and how much of the homework was completed? The usefulness of the homework and how did it benefit the, the patient the following, for the following week? And should the homework be modified? The next part of the therapy session, the patient and the therapist discuss the first agenda item that the patient has. And there are four areas that the therapist can ask themselves questions. And the first one is to define the problem. So there you find the specific problem of the patient. Then you find the specific situations in which a problem arose during the patient's um, sessions or just life. And does the patient believe they have this problem? Does it, do they believe that it affects them? Does the problem fit into the cognitive con conceptualization? And overall, does the patient have goals? And what are the goals? Number two is to devise a strategy with the patient. What has a patient done to try to solve the problem? And then the therapist should place themselves in the patient's position and think about what the patient is going through. And the outright problem solving, the thoughts and beliefs that might interfere with problem solving. So things that the patient might be going through that can interfere with the patients trying to solve the problem and number three is to cho choose techniques um a therapist should ask what, what am i trying to accomplish what am i trying to do with the patient and that's when they just dis can discuss specific agenda item with the patient and the techniques that have worked well in the past so the therapist should think about the techniques and the, the te techniques that have not worked in the past and they evaluate the effectiveness by thinking how has it been effective Number four is monitoring the process. In this, the therapist can ask questions like, are we working together as a team? Does the patient have interfering automatic thoughts about themselves, about the technique, about therapy or the future? And is the, the patient's mood, how is it? is it? Is it lifting? And how is the technique working? Is it effective or should the therapist try something else? And then should the therapist should think about the time and if they're finishing on time or if they should continue another time with um, at a different session, or will the follow-up be beneficial, like a homework assignment? And that's when um, the therapist should think if they should record for the patient to review at their own time at home. This chapter, uh, chapter 19, provides ideas and techniques for effective treatment planning. Um, it has many requirements, like a complete diagnosis and established formulation of the case and understanding of the patient's characteristics and problems. This chapter also provides ways to accomplish broad therapeutic goals and ways that ultimately help the therapist create an effective treatment plan for the patient. Um, as we know from earlier chapters or from the book by Corey, um, cognitive behavioral therapy is designed to treat depression and a number of mental disorders. So it is important to devise plans that go in accordance with each patient's problems, with their specific problem. This material is important because without a knowledge of how to construct an effective treatment plan, the therapy would be unsuccessful and not beneficial to the client. 